Hello, SBC fam. Pastor Pitts here with another daily devotional. My hope, my prayer is that you will be inspired to think just for a few moments on how you can grow in Christ, become more knowledgeable of what God wants for us and desires from us and how God wants to move and work in us and through us. And so today I want to inspire you. I hope to inspire you with a word from James, the half brother of Jesus, looking at James chapter one, verses one and two. I'm going to focus on verse two, but verse one sets the context. He writes, James, a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes living in the dispersion, I greet you. Verse two, consider it great joy, my brothers and sisters, when you experience various trials. James, the half-brother of Jesus, as I just mentioned, lived in the presence of Jesus, but did not fully recognize who Jesus was. The concept and the context of James's letter is saying, I lived with Jesus for all these years and didn't realize that he was the ultimate power, the ultimate example, and I'd missed it. And now that he has ascended to sit at the right hand of God, he still is available to us. Don't wait like I did, experience him now. And the 12 tribes were living dispersed throughout all the land because of persecution and because of wars and battles and things of that nature. And he writes a letter to encourage all the saints everywhere. And I pray that this devotion will encourage saints everywhere. He says, consider it, or one version says, count it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you go through various trials. That is crazy. You know, it just is. It's crazy. It's counterintuitive. It is not what we naturally desire that when we go through trials and and testings and all kinds of things that how will we count it all joy? And, and, and I want to just kind of elaborate a little bit on what kind of trials here in this context, here in this text, these are not necessarily trials that you caused on yourself. The context is saying, you know, it's not the trial of, of, of lung cancer because you smoked for 40 years. It's not the, the trial of, of going through a divorce, a divorce because you were uh, unfaithful in your marriage or something of that nature. No, these are things that just come up on you and just sprung on you, things you didn't expect. Those other things are true as well with things that you have caused, but the context of this text is these are the things that you didn't expect that came out of thin air, nowhere, sickness, and not necessarily your sickness, but the sickness of a loved one. Now you have to care for one. My sister can relate to that. Our persecution, this is, you le you're believing in Jesus Christ. You're believing in the foundations of the faith and people are attacking you and persecuting you. I'm thinking about the young um, tennis star, Naomi and how she went through a period of depression and she began to say share publicly about her depression and how people just began to persecute and attack her and to belittle her because she's not perfect and because she shows her humanity, the persecution that comes out of nowhere for no reason or temptation. You're, you're tempted to do something that you didn't think you would be tempted to do and you're challenged, you're enticed to, to commit a sin. These are the things that he's talking about when he talks about various trials. And notice he didn't say, one trial, he says, various trials, meaning that trials will come your way in all shapes, um, in all forms, in all fashions. And he says this, James says, saint of God, who's under all this duress and stress and oppression and depression, he says, count it all joy. Let me tell you the word I want to focus on just for about another minute the word count. Another word is consider. Or another, another phrase is to think about your trials differently. He says you would count or you would credit or you would put in a category of the things that are happening to you as a deficit, as something that is negative. He says no, because this word count or consider is an accounting term. He says you're going to put it in the part of the ledger that says it is a liability that you have to go through sickness. It's a liability that you're going through temptation. It's a liability that you're being persecuted. It's a liability that you're going through trouble. He says no, reconsider where you place it on the ledger. He says move it from a deficit 
to an asset, to something that is a positive. Because what he wants us to understand and what God is trying to teach us in this text is that he uses trouble and trials to prepare us for what God has in the future for us. Various trials will surround us on every hand, but he wants us to think differently. That's why he says weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning because you would think about that pain differently. That's why he says all things work together for the good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Think about your struggle very differently. He also reminds us in the Bible that James, uh, that Jacob says that you, Joseph, I'm sorry, said you meant it for bad, but God meant it for good. That's why Job could stand firm in his faith by and say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I need to remind you all that trials come and that we have to think about them in different, from a different perspective, in a different way. What is the trial that has come your way? Think about the things in the past. Haven't you grown? Haven't you developed patience or grace or mercy or compassion based upon the things you go through? Here's what I want to say. Your trials can make you better or they can make you bitter. I know people who have gone through some pretty horrible things and it wasn't their fault and they become bitter. That's because they are counting, they're counting it or crediting it to the wrong side of the ledger. But I also know people who went through some incredibly tough times and they saw that it's God strengthening them and the God preparing them and they counted all joy. My mother, my mother said this one time and I'll close on this. My mother said she thanked God for the good old cancer that she had. I think, like, Mom, how in the heck could you thank God for this good old cancer? And she says, first and foremost, it's not the f f worst thing I've ever been through. And secondly, she said, it's making me depend on him and trust him as a healer. And I and she looked at me and she said this way. She said, and Reverend, I trust him as a healer. <laughs> Do you trust God even in the midst of your trials? Can we trust him when things are falling all apart. That's the true character. James said, the half-brother of Jesus, count it, consider it all joy when you go through various trials. Don't become bitter because God will make you better. Let's pray. God, thank you for various trials, the trials of temptation and the trials of of sickness and the trials of persecution and the trials of financial hardship and the trials of broken relationships and all the ways that you use, oh God, to prepare us and to build us up. I thank you for your word from James to remind us that you are in it and that things will work out for the good. God, forgive us for doubting you. Forgive us for putting our challenges on the wrong side of the ledger. And thank you for loving us through it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Until we meet again, peace.